Hey, Mr. Richards here. Here are your 8-7 practice solutions for Algebra 1. We had 9 to 27 on in the first five questions dealt with factoring polynomials if it cannot be factored using an integer's right prime. We're going to use our Xbox method again. And so A was 10, B is negative 9, C is 6. So 8 times C is 60, B was negative 9. So we're looking for the product of 60 that adds up to negative 9. Well, that means for a product of a positive number, we're going to need a negative times a negative to be positive. Well, you look at all your options here, negative 60 times negative 1, that doesn't add up to negative 9. Negative 30 plus negative 2 wouldn't add up to negative 9. Negative 15 plus negative 4 wouldn't add up to negative 9. And negative 6 times negative 10 wouldn't add up to negative 9. So this is an example right out of the gate of a prime polynomial. Luckily, that's the only one. <laughs> As we go through these, a is 10, B is 21, C is negative 10. So A times C is negative 100, B is 21. So we're looking for a product of negative 100 and the sum of 21. So we need a negative times a positive, where the positive is going to be bigger. 25 times negative 4 gets us to negative 100. 25 plus negative 4 gets us to 21. So we have 25 and negative 4. And so in the box, we have 10x squared and negative 10, we put in our 25x and our negative 4x, and then we factor. And these you really have to pay attention with the GCFs. 10x squared and negative 4x is 2x. 25x and negative 10 is a positive 5. 10x squared with 25x is 5x. Negative 4x and negative 10 is negative 2, and so there's your factoring. 2x plus 5 times 5x minus 2. Question 13. A is 12, B is negative 4, C is negative 5, so A times C is negative 60, B is negative 4. And so these start off relatively simple. We're looking for something that multiplies to be negative 60 that adds up to negative 4. How about negative 10 and 6? Put those in, you have 10y squared, I'm sorry, 12y squared and negative 5. And then you have your negative 10y and 6y. And again, you can switch where these go in, it's going to be factoring the same. But you get 6y minus 5, 2y, and a positive 1, and that's your solution. 6y minus 5 times 2y plus 1. In question 15, you need to look out for, is there a GCF you can pull out first? In this case, you know, when you have a bunch of even numbers, you can at least do two. Um, and then you see they're still all even, so let's do another two. <laughs> but if you divide all these by 4, you have 4 times 2z squared plus 5z minus 12, all right? So your a is 2, your b is 5, your c is negative 12. And so you're looking for a product here of negative 24 that adds up to 5. That's 8 times negative 3. So 8 and negative 3. And when you go to the x-box now, your factoring is this 2z squared plus 5z minus 12. We already took out the 4. So inside is going to go the 2z squared and the negative 12. That's the part we're factoring now. And so then we have 8z and negative 3z, and then factor. 2z, negative 3, a z, a positive 4. And so that's our 2z minus 3 times z plus 4, but don't forget about that original 4. So it's 4 times 2z minus 3 times z plus 4. 17, very similarly, we can take out a 3 out of both of these, or all of these. So divide the 3 out, you get 6h squared plus 5h minus 6 left. So our a is 6, or b is 5, or c is negative 6. a times c is negative 36, b is 5. And I know as I'm going through this, um, you know, it's one of those, gosh, okay, products of negative 36 that add up to 5. Sometimes you have to list multiple things out just to think through them. And we know 12 times 3 was 36, but that's, you can't manipulate those to get to 5. 6 times 6 is 36, but you can't manipulate those to get to 5. And you go, oh, 4 and 9. Okay, 4 times 9 is 36. I need to get this to be a positive 5. And so the 9 needs to be positive. So negative 4 times 9, or negative 4 plus 9. And I know as I'm walking through these quickly, um, part of the reason is the first video I created, writing all this stuff down, the sound didn't record. <laughs> Whoops. But... You know, it's like, oh, that's the answer. How does it get to that? That's frustrating. I can't get there that fast. It's okay. Um, 
that the more you solve these, the more you work with the numbers, the more factoring should come naturally, I hope. So you have 6h squared and the negative 6. You have the negative 4h and the 9h. And then pull your factors out. 2h, 3, 3h, negative 2. So you have your 3 that you factored out originally, and then 2h plus 3, and 3h minus 2. Now we get to equations, the last five questions. So we have 3h squared plus 2h minus 16 equals 0. So factor like we've been factoring. a is 3, b is 2, c is negative 16. So we're looking for a product of negative 48 that adds up to 2. Well, negative 6 times 8. So we have 3h squared in our negative 16. We have 8h and negative 6h. And then pull these out. 3h and 8, h and negative 2. So now you have 3h plus 8 times h minus 2, and now we're not done, that equals 0. Each of these parts we're going to set equal to 0. So 3h plus 8 equals 0, and h minus 2 equals 0. So subtract the 8, you get 3h equals negative 8. Divide by 3, you get h equals negative 8 thirds as an option. Add 2, you get h equals 2. So you have negative 8 thirds and 2 is your solution to these equations. And you could show check steps, but for the sake of time, uh, when I re first recorded the video, I didn't show it. Um, but I can assure you these answers are right because I checked using the answer key at least. You know, I know you didn't have that, but uh, normally when you check, you substitute back in and make sure the left side equals the right side. In 21, we've set equal to zero, so we're good to go. A is eight, B is negative 10, C is three. A times C is 24, add up to negative 10. Well, it took me a few seconds to think about these because I know 12 times 2 is 24, but we need these both to be positive or both to be negative here uh, to get a positive result. And so I'm like, oh, 6 times 4. Negative 6 times negative 4 is a positive 24. Negative 6 plus negative 4 is a negative 10. So 8q squared, negative 6q, negative 4q, and 3. Factor them out, you get 2q and a minus 1, you get 4q and a minus 3. So you get 2q minus 1 times 4q minus 3 equals 0. Those are the two pieces you're setting equal to 0. 2q minus 1 equals 0. Add the 1, divide by 2. 4q minus 3 equals 0. Add the 3, divide the 4, you get 1 half and 3 fourths. Now, 23, this isn't set equal to 0, so you need to make this equal 0. You need to make it equal 0. So it's add 4r to both sides. Subtract 6 from both sides. You're left with 10r squared minus 17r minus 6 equals 0. And so a is 10, b is negative 17, c is negative 6. You're looking for a product of negative 60 that adds up to negative 17. Now this one took me a while to solve. Um, I listed all these factors. And I can't get there. I can't get there. Negative 12 and negative 5. Or just you know, negative 12 and 5, 2 and 3, 4 and 15. If you have to list a whole bunch of these out as you're solving, that's completely normal. That's completely all right. Um, if you can get to the, the factors that you need right away, awesome. It's 3 and negative 20. So 3 plus negative 20. But sometimes it requires listing all of this stuff out to get there. And that's fine. So we have the 10r squared and the negative 6. We have the 3r and the negative 20r. So we have our r minus 2, our 10r plus 3. We're going to set them equal to 0. So r minus 2 equals 0. Add the 2, you get r equals 2. This one's a little more tricky, but subtract the 3 and divide by 10, you get negative 3 tenths and 2. 2 to go. Here, again, since the 6y squared is already positive, let's just keep it positive, all right? Let's add 7y and add 2, so you get 6y squared plus 7y plus 2. And I forgot to write one thing down here. That equals zero. Now, your a is six, your b is seven, your c is two, so you're looking for a product of 12 that adds up to seven. Easiest one, I think, in the lesson today. Four times three is 12, four plus three is seven. And so six y squared and the two, you get three y and four y. Factors out to be two y plus one, three y plus two. Set those equal to zero. Subtract the one, divide the two, you get negative one half. Over here, Subtract the 2, divide the 3, you get negative 2 thirds. So negative 2 thirds and negative 1 half are your solutions to 25. Now 27 in the first recording of this um, was not pretty, <laughs> but um, we subtracted 16k, subtract 20 from both sides here. 
So you're left with 12k squared minus 1 minus 20 equals 0. So your a is 12, your b is negative 1, and your c is negative 20. So you're looking for a product of negative 240 that adds up to be negative 1, which means the numbers have to be right next to each other. And in the original recording of this video, um, I was really, really struggling to find 240, period, because it's a big number. And then as you solve these, you know, if you need, make factor trees. I mean, you know they have to be close to each other, these two prop, these two uh, factors. And so when you make a factor tree, sometimes it can help you to see, oh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 16. And I'm left with 15. Hey, that's 1 apart. I need my 16 to be negative because this is going to be a negative 1. So 15 times negative 16. I do think this was, for me at least, the hardest question to come up with. And so you have the 12k squared, the negative 20, negative 16k and 15k. And from there, you're just factoring. 3k, negative 4. 4k, 5. 3k minus 4 times 4k plus 5 is 0. Set them equal to 0. We're going to add the 4, divide the 3, you get 4 thirds. Subtract the 5, divide the 4, you get negative 5 fourths. So negative 5 fourths and 4 thirds are your solutions. So just keep at it. Um, I know it's not the easiest thing in the world to think about all these factors and think about how these multiply and divide and add and all that fun stuff, but the more you do these, the more confident you'll get and, um, and the better you'll get. That's it. Good luck.